Susan Reed, a successful regional manager, and her husband Richard, a machinist grappling with unemployment. Their seemingly ordinary life is jolted into a whirlwind of confusion and revelation when Susan discovers Richard experimenting with her lipstick. What follows is an unconventional journey orchestrated by Susan's sister Loretta, leading Richard down a path of feminization that tests the boundaries of their marriage. Now let's start the main story. As Susan, I remember that day vividly. It was a mix of the mundane and the mysterious, a day where the misplaced lipstick set off a series of events that were both amusing and perplexing. Standing in front of the mirror, I had to pause and reflect on the dynamics of my marriage with Richard, especially now that he was out of work. His pride and my career success had created an inspoken tension between us. In the office that afternoon, I found myself distracted. The conversation with Loretta about the lipstick bet lingered in my mind. The idea of Richard using my lipstick seemed absurd, yet part of me was curious. Could my organized machinist husband be dabbling in my makeup? It was a ludicrous thought, but Loretta's challenge had ignited a spark of curiosity. That evening, as I prepared dinner, Richard's frustration was palpable. His words about finding a man's job echoed in the kitchen, laden with the weight of traditional gender roles. I couldn't help but respond with sarcasm, suggesting cosmetology. The irony wasn't lost on me, given Loretta's bet. After dinner, as Richard retreated to his thoughts, I quietly made my way to the bathroom. Replacing my usual lipstick with Loretta's tattoo felt like setting a trap in a game I wasn't sure I wanted to play. But curiosity and a hint of mischief got the better of me. The next morning, as I got ready for work, I couldn't help but glance at the lipstick in the drawer. It was untouched, or so it seemed. As I left for work, I wondered what the day would hold. Would I find traces of fire engine red on Richard? The thought was both absurd and intriguing. Throughout the day, my mind raced with possibilities. What if Richard really was using my lipstick? What if he wasn't? Either way, I knew that the outcome of this little game would bring a change in our relationship, a new understanding, perhaps. As the day turned to evening, I found myself looking forward to returning home, curious to see if the lipstick had been used. The thought of confronting Richard, either about using my lipstick or about our current situation, seemed daunting yet necessary. It was clear that this bet with Loretta was more than just about lipstick. It was about confronting the unspoken truths in our relationship. Richard's struggle with unemployment and my career success had created an unspoken chasm between us. The misplaced lipstick, as trivial as it seemed, had become a symbol of the unaddressed issues in our marriage. I arrived home that evening with a mix of anticipation and apprehension. As I greeted Richard, I scrutinized him for any signs of the bright red lipstick. There was none, but that didn't mean anything definitive yet. Dinner passed with the usual small talk, but underneath my mind was buzzing with the day's peculiar mission. Later, when Richard was engrossed in his own activities, I sneaked into the bathroom. My heart raced as I opened the drawer. The tattoo lipstick was still there, seemingly untouched. A part of me felt relieved, yet another part felt disappointed. What was I hoping to find? That night, as I lay in bed, I realized that this whole lipstick episode was not just about catching Richard in a silly act. It was about seeking a connection, a way to break through the barriers that had built up between us since his job loss. Maybe, I thought, we needed more than a silly bet to address the real issues. In the days that followed, the lipstick lay untouched in the drawer. Each day, I checked it with dwindling enthusiasm. The realization dawned on me that what I really needed to do was have an open conversation with Richard. We needed to confront our fears, insecurities, and the changes in our dynamic head-on. So one evening, I sat down with Richard. We talked about everything, his job loss, my career, our roles, and how we felt about all these changes. It wasn't an easy conversation, but it was necessary. We laughed, we argued, and most importantly, we understood each other a little better. As for the lipstick, it remained a quirky anecdote in our life. A reminder that sometimes it's the smallest, most unexpected things that can lead to the biggest changes in our relationships. And as for Loretta's bet, well, I lost, but in doing so, I gained something much more valuable, a deeper understanding of my husband and our marriage. As Susan, I recall that period with a mix of emotions. Each day seemed to bring its own set of challenges, both at work and at home. The lipstick saga, though trivial in the grand scheme of things, had become a curious subplot in the narrative of our lives. That morning, as I meticulously applied my own lipstick, 
The thought of swapping it with Loretta's tattoo lipstick crossed my mind, but a part of me hesitated. What was I really trying to prove? If Richard was indeed using my lipstick, what did that mean for us? And if he wasn't, then was I just creating unnecessary drama? With these thoughts swirling in my head, I decided against the swap, leaving the tattoo lipstick untouched in the drawer. Richard's routine had become predictable, yet each day I found myself observing him with a new sense of curiosity. His interactions with the lipstick, his reactions to the changes at home, and his demeanor overall, everything seemed to carry a deeper meaning now. The house renovations, particularly the transformation of the spare bedroom, were a welcome distraction. The pale pink walls and the new decorations brought a refreshing change. But even as I admired the room, my thoughts inevitably drifted back to Richard and the lipstick. Dinner that night was a quiet affair. Richard's culinary skills had always been a source of comfort, and his breaded pork chops with milk gravy were no exception. As we ate, I contemplated telling him about the lipstick, but something held me back. Was it fear of what I might discover, or was it the reluctance to face a potential issue in our marriage? The next day at work, as I braced myself for the sales figures, my mind was only partly on the job. The rest was with Richard. His behavior, once a source of mild irritation, had now become a subject of deep introspection for me. What was going on in his mind? How did he really feel about his current situation? As I applied my lipstick in the morning, a part of me longed for the simplicity of days gone by, when misplaced lipstick was just that, misplaced, not a symbol of deeper issues. I left for work with a heavy heart, knowing that the day ahead would be challenging, regardless of the sales figures. Richard, in his routine, continued to gravitate towards the lipstick. It was an action that, unbeknownst to him, held significant meaning for me. As I navigated through my day, part of me wondered what I would find upon returning home. Would there be any telltale signs of Richard using the lipstick? And if so, what would that mean for us? As the protagonist of this story, I was caught in a web of emotions and uncertainties, each thread leading to more questions than answers. The lipstick, once a mere accessory, had become a symbol of the unspoken and unresolved in our marriage. And as the day drew to a close, I knew that soon, one way or another, I would have to confront the situation head-on. The uncertainty was becoming unbearable, and the need for clarity was paramount. Returning home that evening, my mind was preoccupied with the sales figures and the situation with Richard. The preliminary sales figures had been promising, a small relief in the midst of personal turmoil. As I entered the house, I was greeted by the familiar scent of dinner cooking, Richard's way of contributing to our household in his own manner. During dinner, we talked about mundane things, carefully avoiding any topic that might lead to discomfort. But the elephant in the room, the unspoken topic of the lipstick, loomed large in my thoughts. The urge to check the drawer and see if the tattoo lipstick had been used was overwhelming, yet I resisted. This wasn't about catching Richard in an act, it was about understanding the dynamics of our changed relationship. That night, lying in bed, I pondered over everything. The lipstick, Richard's actions, our conversations, they all pointed to a deeper issue. It wasn't just about job loss or gender roles, it was about how we were coping with change, both as individuals and as a couple. The next morning, as I prepared for the day, the temptation to resolve the lipstick mystery once and for all was strong. But I stopped myself. This wasn't the way to address our issues. We needed an open and honest conversation, not a test or a trap. Richard, seemingly oblivious to the storm brewing in my mind, went about his morning routine. His casual use of the lipstick, a habit he had unknowingly formed, was a small act that held great significance for me. It was a manifestation of the unspoken changes in his life, his identity, and our relationship. As the day unfolded, I made a decision. It was time to have a frank discussion with Richard. Not about the lipstick, but about us, our fears, our expectations, and our future. The lipstick had served its purpose. It had opened my eyes to the necessity of communication in our marriage. That evening, I sat down with Richard. I started the conversation, not with accusations or suspicions, but with an expression of my feelings and concerns. We talked, really talked for the first time in a long while. It was a conversation filled with honesty, vulnerability, and a shared desire to understand and support each other. The story of the lipstick, as insignificant as it seemed, had led us to a turning point in our marriage. It was a reminder that sometimes, it's the little things that can reveal the most about us and our relationships. 
As Susan, that evening felt surreal, as if I had stepped into a bizarre alternate reality. Seeing Richard in such a state, confused and vulnerable, my initial anger was quickly replaced by a mix of concern and disbelief. Despite my frustration with him, this punishment seemed extreme and far from what I had expected or wanted. Loretta's actions, although driven by her own perceptions and experiences, were crossing a line. The sight of Richard, now transformed and clearly uncomfortable, made me question the entire situation. Was this really about the lipstick, or had it become something else entirely? I watched, almost in a daze, as Loretta expertly applied the gel breasts and dressed Richard in the maid's outfit. The absurdity of the scene before me was overwhelming. This was no longer about a bet or a misplaced lipstick. It had escalated into a strange form of retribution that I couldn't condone. Richard's look of resignation and discomfort struck a chord in me. This was not the man I had married, the man who had been my partner through thick and thin. This was a man being humiliated, and for what? A harmless curiosity, a misstep in our marriage that we hadn't yet learned to navigate. I realized then that this had gone too far. Loretta, with her own biases and motivations, had taken this situation to an extreme that I could not support. It was time to put an end to this farce. Loretta, stop, I finally said, my voice firm yet shaking with emotion. This isn't right. This isn't what I wanted. Loretta looked at me, surprised. But Susan, this is about respect, about showing him. I cut her off. No, Loretta. This is not respect. This is humiliation, and it's not how I want to address this situation. Turning to Richard, I saw a mix of relief and confusion in his eyes. Richard, I'm sorry. This went too far. I never wanted this. Richard, still in the maid's outfit, looked at me with a vulnerability I hadn't seen before. Susan, I, I don't know what to say. I approached him, my heart heavy with regret. Let's talk, Richard. Just you and me. We need to figure this out, but not like this. Not with punishments or dares. We need to communicate, to understand each other. Loretta, realizing the gravity of the situation, quietly packed up her things and left, leaving us alone. That night, Richard and I talked. We talked about everything, the lipstick, his job loss, our roles in the marriage, and how we felt about each other. It was a difficult conversation, but a necessary one. We both had made mistakes, assumptions, and missteps. But through honest communication, we began to see each other's perspectives and challenges. The lipstick, which had started as a trivial matter, had opened the door to a deeper understanding between us. It was a turning point in our marriage, a reminder that empathy, communication, and respect were key to navigating the complexities of our relationship. As we moved forward, we knew there would be more challenges, more misunderstandings. But that night, we made a commitment to face them together, with honesty and an open heart. The story of the lipstick had ended, but our journey as a couple was just beginning anew, with renewed understanding and a stronger bond. As Susan, I stared at the figure standing before me, a mixture of disbelief and shock coursing through me. It was Richard, yet not Richard, transformed into this character, Barbette, by Loretta's relentless drive. The sight was jarring, a stark reminder of the absurdity that this situation had spiraled into. Loretta's satisfaction was evident, a sharp contrast to my own feelings of discomfort and unease. This wasn't what I wanted, not really. The initial anger and frustration I had felt towards Richard had dissipated, replaced by a deep sense of regret and empathy. This was no longer about a misplaced lipstick or a bet. It had become a humiliating spectacle that had gone too far. Richard, I began, my voice barely above a whisper, I, this isn't right. The words felt inadequate, but they were a start. This has gone too far. I never wanted this. You don't have to do this. But Richard, or Barbette as Loretta had named him, stood there, a look of resignation in his eyes. It was clear that he felt trapped, bound by his word to Loretta and perhaps by his own sense of failure. Loretta interjected, Come on, Susan. It's just a bit of fun. Give it a chance. You wanted a maid, and now you've got one. Her words stung, a harsh reminder of the casual comment that had led to this bizarre turn of events. I realized then that this was no longer about what I wanted or didn't want. It was about Richard's dignity, our relationship, and the respect that we owed each other as partners. Enough, Loretta, I said firmly. This isn't fun, it's demeaning, and it's not how I want to resolve things with Richard. I turned to Richard, reaching out to him. Please, let's talk about this. Just the two of us. We need to sort this out together without these games and punishments. Richard looked at me, 
his expression a mix of confusion and relief. Susan, I, I'm sorry. I don't know what I was thinking with the lipstick, but this, this isn't the way. I nodded, my heart heavy with the realization of how far things had gone. I know, we both made mistakes, but we can fix this, together. We don't need costumes or dares to do that. Loretta, sensing the shift in the room, collected her things quietly. I'll leave you two to talk, she said, a hint of remorse in her voice. As she left, Richard and I sat down, beginning the long process of unpacking everything that had happened. It was a difficult conversation, filled with admissions, apologies, and a shared desire to rebuild what we had lost in the chaos of recent events. The story of the lipstick, which had started as a trivial incident, had revealed deeper issues in our relationship, but it had also provided us with an opportunity to address them, to communicate openly and honestly, and to reaffirm our commitment to each other. As we moved forward, we knew there would be more challenges, but we also knew that we had the strength and the love to face them together, as partners, with respect and understanding. The story of Barbette would remain a strange chapter in our lives, a reminder of the importance of communication, empathy, and the value of preserving each other's dignity, even in the most trying of times. In the days that followed, Richard and I worked on rebuilding the trust and understanding that had been strained. We talked more, not just about the events that had transpired, but also about our hopes, fears, and dreams for the future. We acknowledged the need to be more open with each other, to share our feelings and concerns before they escalated into misunderstandings. The lipstick, once a symbol of discord, had become a reminder of the importance of paying attention to the small things in our relationship, those seemingly insignificant details that can speak volumes about underlying issues. As for the maid outfit and the persona of Barbette, they were put away, a bizarre memento of a time when things had gone awry. Richard and I agreed that while we could look back on this episode with a mix of disbelief and learning, it was not something we wished to revisit. Our journey was not without its bumps, but each challenge brought us closer, teaching us more about each other and about the resilience of our bond. We learned to laugh together again, to find joy in the simple moments, and to appreciate the strengths and quirks in each other. The story of the misplaced lipstick had taken us on an unexpected journey, one that tested our relationship in ways we never imagined. But it also brought us to a place of deeper understanding and love, a testament to the power of communication and empathy in navigating the complexities of marriage. As we moved forward, hand in hand, Richard and I knew that our story was far from over. It was just another chapter in the ongoing tale of our life together, a tale filled with love, learning, and the unending journey of partnership. As Susan, I could feel the gravity of the situation sinking in. What had started as a misguided attempt to address a marital issue had turned into something that felt uncomfortably close to real humiliation. Despite the initial sense of power and control, I began to feel a growing unease with the way things were unfolding. Richard, now Barbette, was dutifully playing his part, but the look in his eyes was one of resignation and discomfort, not the playful complicity I had initially imagined. The reality of the situation was far from the light-hearted reprimand I had envisioned when I first found out about the lipstick. It was becoming increasingly clear that this charade was neither healthy nor productive for our relationship. The transformation from Richard to Barbette, complete with the maid outfit, makeup, and high heels, was meant to be a temporary lesson, a playful way to address a serious issue. However, it was now bordering on a serious infringement of his dignity. The more I observed him, the more I realized that this was not the solution to our problems. It was only exacerbating them. His question about how long he had to be a maid struck a chord in me. It was a reminder of the depth of our relationship and the love we had for each other. This was not just about a misplaced lipstick or a temporary role reversal. It was about respect, communication, and understanding in our marriage. As I watched him navigate the chores in his high heels and maid outfit, a part of me wanted to end this immediately, to apologize and work towards repairing the damage. Yet another part of me was caught in the momentum of the situation, unsure of how to gracefully exit the scenario we had created. 
The realization hit me, this needed to stop. It was time to put an end to this charade and address our issues in a more respectful and constructive manner. I needed to talk to Richard, not as a mistress to a maid, but as a wife to her husband. We needed to sit down as equals and have an honest conversation about our feelings, our fears, and our future together. The sight of Richard struggling to scrub the kitchen floor on his hands and knees was the final straw. This was not who we were, not as individuals and certainly not as a couple. It was time to restore dignity and respect to our relationship. Richard, stop, I said, my voice soft but firm. This has gone too far. I'm sorry. We need to talk, really talk about everything that's happened. Richard looked up, a mix of surprise and relief in his eyes. Susan, yes, I replied, helping him to his feet. Let's get you out of this outfit and sit down to talk. We need to figure out how we got here and how we can move forward together. As we sat down at the kitchen table, the absurdity of the past few days began to sink in. The maid outfit, the makeup, the role-playing, it all felt like a strange dream, far removed from the reality of our loving, albeit complicated marriage. Richard, I'm sorry, I began, my voice laden with remorse. This started as a way to address a problem, but it turned into something hurtful. I never wanted to humiliate you or make you feel less than you are. You're my husband, and I respect you. Richard, still in the remnants of his barbette persona, looked weary but relieved. Susan, I know I made a mistake with the lipstick. It was foolish, and I understand why you were upset. But this, this was too much. I felt lost, humiliated. I nodded, acknowledging his feelings. I see that now, and I'm deeply sorry. We lost our way, got caught up in something that neither of us really wanted. Our issues, they're deeper than a misplaced lipstick or a maid outfit. We need to communicate better, be more open with each other. The conversation that followed was long overdue. We talked about Richard's job loss, my career, and how these changes had affected our relationship. We discussed our fears, our insecurities, and our desires for the future. It was a raw, honest exchange, sometimes painful but always necessary. As the conversation unfolded, it became clear that our love and respect for each other were still strong. We had simply allowed external pressures and unspoken grievances to create a rift between us. The misplaced lipstick had been a symptom, not the cause of our issues. We need to work on this together, Richard said, his voice firm. No more games, no more punishments. Just us, working through our problems like we always have. I agreed wholeheartedly. Yes, you're right. We're a team, Richard. We can get through this, but only if we're honest and supportive of each other. As we cleared away the remnants of the past few days, the maid outfit, the high heels, the makeup, we both felt a sense of relief. It was like shedding a weight we hadn't even realized we were carrying. In the days and weeks that followed, Richard and I worked hard to rebuild our relationship. We sought counseling to help us navigate our communication issues and to find healthier ways to address our problems. We rediscovered the joy in our marriage, finding new ways to connect and support each other. As Richard stood in the garage, a sense of liberation began to wash over him. The removal of the makeup and the feminine attire felt like shedding a disguise, one that he had never wanted to wear in the first place. Despite the lingering presence of the chastity belt, he felt a renewed sense of self, a reconnection with his own identity that had been lost in the strange whirlwind of events. The garage, with its familiar tools and solvents, represented a return to normalcy, a return to the world he knew and understood. It was his domain, a place where he felt competent and in control, starkly contrasting with the role he had been playing in the house. His thoughts drifted to Susan and their relationship. Despite the recent upheaval, his feelings for her remained unchanged. He loved her, but he knew they needed to address the issues that had led to this bizarre situation. The role-playing, the lipstick, the maid outfit, they were all symptoms of deeper problems in their marriage that needed attention. Richard realized that communication was key. He needed to talk to Susan openly about his feelings, about the humiliation and discomfort he had experienced, and about their relationship going forward. It was clear that they both had to make changes, to be more understanding and supportive of each other. He also recognized that he had his own part to play in their issues. His initial experimentation with the lipstick, though seemingly harmless, had triggered a series of events that spiraled out of control. It was a reminder that actions, 
no matter how small, can have significant consequences in a relationship. With these thoughts in mind, Richard decided to wait for Susan to return from work. He planned to have a frank and open conversation with her, to lay everything out on the table. It was time to rebuild their relationship on a foundation of mutual respect, understanding, and love. As he waited, Richard busied himself with organizing the garage, finding comfort in the familiar task. It was a way to clear his mind, to prepare for the important conversation that lay ahead. He knew it wouldn't be easy, but he was determined to make things right, to restore the balance in their marriage. When Susan finally returned home, Richard was ready. He greeted her with a sense of resolve, a determination to put an end to the charade and start anew. Susan, he began, we need to talk about everything that's happened, about us. I know I've made mistakes, but the way things have been these past few days, it's not right. We're better than this. Susan, sensing the seriousness in his voice, nodded. You're right, Richard. Let's sit down and talk. We both have things we need to say. And so they sat down together, two people who had been through a strange and unexpected journey, ready to face the challenges of their relationship head on. It was a conversation that would mark the beginning of a new chapter in their lives, one based on honesty, respect, and a renewed commitment to each other. As their laughter echoed in the cozy ambiance of the supper club, Richard and Susan found themselves reconnecting in a way they hadn't in quite some time. The absurdity and trials of the past few days had, in an unexpected twist, brought them closer. They had navigated through a bizarre and challenging episode, emerging with a deeper understanding and appreciation for each other. As they finished their meal, the conversation flowed easily, filled with shared jokes and tender glances. It was clear that their bond had been strengthened, not just in spite of the recent events, but perhaps because of them. On the drive home, Susan's suggestion about occasionally revisiting the role of Barbette lingered in Richard's mind. He understood that it was more than just a quirky request. It was a reflection of Susan's need for a certain kind of comfort and escapism, especially after a taxing day. Agreeing to this, albeit with boundaries like doing it only on Tuesdays, was a testament to his love for her and his willingness to support her in unconventional ways. When they arrived home, the anticipation of Loretta's reaction brought a sense of playful conspiracy between them. It was a far cry from the tension and misunderstanding that had clouded their relationship just a few days ago. As they waited for Loretta, Richard and Susan sat together, talking and sharing in a way that felt both new and familiar. It was as if they were rediscovering each other, finding joy in the quirks and idiosyncrasies that made their relationship unique. Loretta's arrival was met with a mixture of surprise and amusement. Her reaction to seeing Richard back in his regular clothes, confident and relaxed, was priceless. The evening unfolded with laughter and candid conversations, a far cry from the dramatic confrontations of the past. In the end, Richard and Susan's journey through the unexpected chapter of the lipstick and barbette had brought them to a place of deeper understanding and appreciation for one another. They realized that relationships like life are unpredictable and often messy, but facing challenges together, with love and a sense of humor, can make them stronger. Their story, with all its twists and turns, stood as a reminder that love is resilient, adaptable, and often finds a way to flourish in the most unexpected circumstances. As they looked forward to their future, Richard and Susan knew that whatever came their way, they would face it together, with open hearts and a willingness to embrace the unpredictable journey of life side by side.